What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 15 craziest endings to a wrestling show. Been looking forward to checking this video out by Wrestling Flashback. Make sure you guys subscribe to him if you haven't already. We're gonna get right into this one. I definitely want to see what he has on the list for some of the craziest endings to a wrestling show. And we can go back down memory lane because some of these endings, I'm pretty sure it's gonna bring some good fond memories. Let's get right into it, man. Is this on? There is no program on television quite like wrestling. It's Facts. a form of entertainment that likes to save the best for last. Mm -hmm. As the main events are usually where the most chaos takes place. Crazy. Crazy. Oh my god. Uh huh. Today we're highlighting the most insane ways episodes oh, Cody. can be closed by looking at 15 <laughs> crazy endings to a wrestling show. Wait a minute, Triple H. Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger weaved it. Hold on. Episodes can be closed by looking at 15 <laughs> that was crazy endings yeah. to a wrestling show. Look at this. We. <laughs> Do them in the trash can. Oh, classic segment two. Kane got set on fire. <laughs> this is when Randy Orton was a true menace, bro. And this nigga Triple H broke into his house and tried to murder him with a sledgehammer. Legendary, man. <laughs> <laughs> WCW was at its best in 1997. Some of the endings to Nitro that year rival Attitude Era Raws in terms of grandstand finishes. Most of them involved Sting <laughs> during his year long feud with Sting the pulling off the mask to, put <laughs> to still have the face paint on is it's fucking iconic. <laughs> the New World Order and Hollywood Hogan. Sting on his way to the ring to show up anywhere, yes. anytime he wants. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> it was especially fun to see the Stinger perform his trademark repel from the ceiling spot. That is crazy too. It is Sting. It's gotta be Sting. Not fooled this time, guys. Uh, eight guys to beat up a mannequin. <laughs> One of the most insane Nitro moments occurred on the June 9th show from 97 when Sting Love came to the rescue of Diamond Dallas Page, who'd been brawling with the NWO in the ring. Sting, while still fighting off other wrestlers, proceeded to hook up DDP to a harness and lift Page off into the sky. In my life, Sting has arrived! What's he doing? Sting's trying to revive him. He's still holding him off! Oh my God! <laughs> God there are numerous crazy Nitro That's endings awesome. that don't involve Sting, however. <laughs> Who could forget when Goldberg challenged Hollywood Hogan for the WCW Championship mm -hmm. on July 6, 1998? It was one of World Championship Wrestling's greatest mm -hmm. nights as the 41,000 in attendance at the Georgia Dome went nuts for Goldberg defeating the Hulkster. Yep. Pop! Bro, the crowd went crazy. Crowd went crazy! Even though WWE's version of WCW as part of the Alliance faction in 2001 was lackluster, the storyline still featured some memorable segments. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> I love this segment, bro. He just stone cold just started beating up everybody. Crowd going crazy. JR losing his mind. Such, oh, such a classic segment. What the rock is cooking? Whoop! Mm -hmm. Such as during the main event of the final SmackDown before Survivor Series. Mm -hmm. The tag match pitting Chris Jericho and The Rock against Kurt Angle and Stone Cold saw interference from all the other wrestlers yep. in the upcoming winner take all five on five elimination match. What transpired was an incredible sequence of finishing moves performed one after the other. This was such a cool segment. It got you hyped for the show, for the pay-per-view. It was the perfect go-home angle for such a huge pay-per-view match. Yep. Yep, the angle slam. 
And then the stunner. It's no surprise this is commonly referred to as the best SmackDown ending ever. The yeah. Asian storyline gave us a taste of what different brands battling against each other would look like. Something that would become more common in the years after the Raw and SmackDown rosters were split. No, he's hurt. No. Yep. They attacked Batista. Oh my God. <laughs> yep. That parking lot brawl, that, oh, that SmackDown versus Raw parking lot brawl. Oh man, that shit was so good. This was so good. With ECW also making a return. We never back down from anybody. Big look. Oh, no. Uh-huh. <laughs> but we want to go back to the very first time Raw and SmackDown superstars clashed on television. It occurred during the 2004 draft lottery when Triple H challenged Eddie Guerrero for the WWE Championship. The match ended prematurely after interference from Evolution led to SmackDown wrestlers making the save. This led to a mass brawl between wrestlers from both shows. <laughs> That definitely. Yup. Yup. Wow, this this was so good, man. So entertaining. <laughs> There's nothing like a spectacular wrestling return. There have been countless great returns that closed out shows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Jesus. Listen to that reaction, man. Infamous return right here. I know Dub don't like this one, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you feel the disdain. Oh my God. This was a cool moment. The what? <laughs> this was that was a holy shit moment. The Undertaker, Brock, and Goldberg in the same ring. Just uh, uh. <laughs> held on to for this is starting with a build to WrestleMania 2000. The Rock took on the Big Show, where if the Great One was victorious, he would be added to WrestleMania's main event. But mm -hmm. if the People's Champ lost, then we would never see The Rock again. Special ref Shane McMahon was about to screw the Brahma Bull out of the match until a limo pulled up. Vince yep. McMahon made his first appearance since the night following Armageddon 1999, after Stephanie had aligned with Triple H. Vince was out for blood. <laughs> I remember this. <laughs> he threw on Shane's ref shirt to help The Rock get the win. It was a trademark Attitude Era Raw uh -huh. brand finale. A month Classic, prior to Vince's man. comeback, there was another memorable return that happened after one of the all-time great Raw main events. The legendary 10-man tag in Dallas on February 7, 2000 was a fast-paced, all-action classic. Listen, look at that crowd reaction, man. Topped off by the return of the Big Red mm -hmm. Machine. Oh, man. <laughs> it was that was so many cool, times man. Kane havoc to end a show. Equal rights. Equal fights. <laughs> oh, my God. Is that a human? <laughs> oh, this is... Oh, poor JR. <laughs> Bro, imagine stomping somebody while they're being cooked. <laughs> imagine just stomping on somebody while they're on fire. It's just cold. Help me. Oh this was crazy, too. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> this was cold, too. Ooh. <laughs> Zack Ryder deserves so much better, bro. This nigga got pushed off the stage in a wheelchair, bro. 
All because Kane wanted John Cena to embrace the hate. So you beat up John Cena's friend. That's cold. All John had to do was embrace the hate. <laughs> as well as returns, there's also been plenty of great debuts that close out episodes of Raw and SmackDown. Yep. You're next, love. I, yeah, funny, fun fact. I literally was just watching this segment like last night. I'm filming this uh, um, in the morning. <laughs> so last night, I literally was watching this entire segment with the Rock Appreciation Night and then Goldberg coming out there. Literally just watched it. And I've seen this segment so many times and I love it every single time. Oh, that's the Bop. Oh. Samoa Joe. Oh God, it's, it's but perhaps no debut on television sent shockwaves to WWE more than when the Nexus interrupted the main yep. event of the June 7, 2010 Raw between John Cena and This CM was Punk. wild. Faction, consisting of competitors from the first season of NXT attacked anyone in sight and destroyed the ringside area in yep. a way no one had ever seen before. Watch out. Oh my God. That's Striker. <laughs> A ringside personnel caught the beats for no reason. Now watch out. Oh my God. Look at this. <laughs> oh my God. It was as if a bomb had gone off. At the same time, it was the most shocking thing seen on WWE TV. That in was years. that was the way good. the ring was decimated during Nexus's debut was unprecedented. Facts. But it drew some parallels to a spot from the summer of 2003 where Brock Lesnar took on the big show mm -hmm. in a bout that resulted in one of SmackDown's most famous moments. For and sure. The 800-pound combined superplex from the top rope completely imploded the ring. It was surreal to witness the carnage while the fans went bananas. That was crazy. <laughs> Bro, that shit was so cool, bro. That shit was so cool, bro. The closest thing to anything like this happening prior was when Big Show upended the square mm -hmm. circle whilst resting as the giant for WCW. Bro. <laughs> Oh, my man just of fans invading the ring caused it to collapse. Both incidents were just two more crazy ways a wrestling show came to an end. We go from the ring imploding to a real controlled explosion yep. on a wrestling show. It happened at the end of the June 11, 2007 edition of Raw, the Vince McMahon Appreciation Night. In I the week watched leading this. up to this event, Vince had been acting strangely. WrestleMania 24, and there's our chairman, Mr. Bro, fucking Vince was, I don't know, what the fuck is going on? Man. Topped off by the end segment to Vince Appreciation Night, where McMahon chose not oh. to cut a promo, leaving the mic in the ring, then awkwardly walking backstage yeah. past everyone. Before entering his limo to leave, Vince I scripted watched, himself to be blown up as a way. I watched this live, and I was just like, did Vince McMahon just die? Did he just die? I couldn't believe what I, I'm like, bro. Did they just kill Vince McMahon? Like, well, what's gonna happen next week? <laughs> being written off TV, but the culprit of the crime was never revealed due to the Benoit yeah. family tragedy. This forced McMahon to reappear on television, officially canceling the limo explosion storyline. Tonight's storyline was to have been the alleged demise of my character, Mr. McMahon. WWE superstar Chris Benoit, his wife Nancy, and their son Daniel are dead. The exploding mm -hmm. limo angle is infamous, not just for how insane it was, yeah. but also because of the tragic real-life events that came uh -huh. directly after. We'll now look instead at a metaphorical explosion that set the wrestling world alight in 2009, yeah. as the summer of punk began with CM Punk's iconic pipe bomb segment yep. that followed John Cena's table match loss to R-Truth. Punk sat cross-legged on the ramp and cut a scathing shoot-style promo where he called out Cena, The Rock, Triple yep. H, Stephanie, and Vince McMahon. There's one thing... The promo that brought me back to wrestling. Ah, oh, man. And it, it, it's just come full circle. If you guys have seen what's happened this last week and CM Punk actually reposting our reaction to him returning back to WWE. This definitely makes me, it, it just makes me feel good, man. Like, holy, bro. It, it came full circle. That's crazy. You're better at than I am. 
And that's kissing Vince McMahon's ass. I don't know if you're as good as Dwayne, Dwayne. though. He's a pretty good ass kisser. <laughs> Maybe this company will be better after Vince McMahon's dead, but the fact is, this is it's, so it's gonna get taken wild. over by his idiotic daughter and his doofus son-in-law and the rest of his stupid family. The incident created tremendous buzz and paved the way for a now red hot punk to hold the WWE title for over a year. Mm -hmm. Our last two examples have seen Vince put on blast in different ways. But now we're going to look at when the chairman was riding high one minute and then shot down the next. This occurred on the March 26, 2001 simulcast edition of Raw and Nitro when Vince spoke to the world after purchasing WCW. The chairman uh -huh. was in the midst of his celebratory promo on Raw when he was interrupted on the other show by yep. Sunshine, who would reveal the true owner of WCW. And the name on the contract does say McMahon, Shane McMahon. <laughs> Bro, look at Vince's face. Vince certainly felt betrayed by his son, and he wouldn't be the only person in history to be stabbed in the back at the end of a roar. Mm-hmm. Yup. Randy Orton. That's a man's wife! <laughs> <laughs> Easily one of the one of the greatest endings to a Monday Night Raw. Oh my God, this was so good. This one was wild too. Oh what the hell? So good. Oh my God. What? This was so good too. This was so good. Oh my God. This is but perhaps the most famous betrayal to close out the red brand yep. occurred on June 2nd, 2014, after The Shield had defeated Evolution twice on pay-per-view. Uh -huh. Which as Triple H and Randy Orton left, a plan B was required, and it came in the form of a chair shot heard around the world. One of the, the greatest world. betrayals. Always a plan B. Oh, my oh. God. So good, man. The quitting was a key point in the Rollins turning on the Shield uh -huh. storyline. The turn did wonders for Rollins' career, just as it did for Batista when he left Evolution in the dust on the February 21st, 2005 Raw. Fresh off winning the Royal Rumble, yep. the animal was to choose what title he would be challenging for at WrestleMania 21. Dave opted to challenge Triple H for the World Heavyweight title, creating one of the great Raw moments in the process. For sure. When you hit him with the thumbs down, what works because Triple H had just did that to Randy Orton not too long ago. And then when he hit him with the thumbs down, bro, oh my God. JR on commentary and the way the table exploded when Batista threw Triple H through it. Oh, this is everything about this is just great. Look at this. Oh my God. WrestleMania God Almighty is right. This crowning moment, much like WrestleMania 14, was for Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin yep. Austin and the champion. Stone Cold. Stone Cold. Stone Cold. The Austin era has begun. But you could argue Austin's face-off with Mike Tyson on yep. January 19th, 1994 yep. was when the whole world first took note of Stone Cold. As Austin established himself as arguably mm -hmm. the baddest motherfucker on the planet by getting in the face of the baddest man on the planet. So here's to ya. Yep. This was so cool, bro. This is so cool, bro. The segment was one of many great show endings involving the rattlesnake. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! It's a toy. McMahon, three sixteen says, "I just, just pissed my, my pants." <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh, We've saved One of the worst stunners of all time, by the way. <laughs> well, nah, Vince is up there recently at WrestleMania. He took a horrible stunner, too. Now, the most iconic WWF championship wins for last. Well, he didn't sell it right. Taking place on the January 4th, 1999 episode. Or we'll take it right either. As rivals Mankind and The Rock clashed with the title on the line. It yeah. Was a trademark Attitude Era main event uh -huh. with all the belts and whistles, including a legendary run-in from Stone Cold. Yep. Look at that crowd reaction. The crowd interaction to the feel good special moment that was created. It was the perfect storybook ending to a wrestling show. Yep. I'd like to dedicate the 
That was so cool, man. Enjoyed Legendary video, moment. Sure to check out our similar video on the 10 crazy spots wrestlers refused but were forced to do. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Yeah, this one was great, man. This was a great one. Go ahead and go give this a like because this was this was a great video. This was fantastic. It brought me back down memory lane. Some of the great moments to end off a show. This is fantastic. This is this is this is how you end off shows, you know. It, it gets you excited for either next week's show or maybe a, a pay per view, man. And those moments will always last. You feel me? So comment down below. Let me know your favorite ending to a wrestling show, whether it's in WCW, AEW, or WWE, even TNA. Let me know your favorite moments, like favorite ending moments of a wrestling show that got you hyped either for the next pay-per-view or the next week's show. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on channel Road to 150K, and I'm still young, speedy, YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.